Okay, I hope that you are having a wonderful day. My class kind of gets settled down and get ready to go with our next Python lesson. And we're going to be talking today about the concept of branching and using conditionals and using conditionals within our uh, within our Canopy software. So I have a copy of Canopy open, and I'm going to be basing some of the instruction here about uh, from lesson 133. And I'm also going to be throwing in a uh, quick whiteboard sketch as well. So let's first talk about a little bit what we learned from the previous lesson. So in 132, we started off by kind of learning how the code editor works and how the Python editor works. And uh, we wrote some simple functions. And we talked about assignment operators. And if, you, uh, if you're depending on the progress that you've made in the previous activity 132, some of that terminology may seem foreign at this point. But understand that as you go through the activity 132, you will get more and more knowledge about that. So in this uh, lesson, I want to just go over a couple of key concepts from the lesson, which include uh, branching operators. And uh, I also want to just kind of go with the, over the Python syntax and kind of some differences between uh, what we're used to and what Python does. So first off, understand very simple, very simple thing. If I would like to create a variable and assign a value to that variable, how do I do that? How do I do that? Go ahead. OK, so, so let's say I have the variable p. And I want to assign a variable. Let's say I want to give it a value of 7. How do I do that? p equals 7, right? OK. This is an assignment operator. OK. What that means is now within my namespace, I have a variable labeled p with a value of 7. I then can take that variable and I can do things with it. So for example, if I want to say, well, what is p times 7? I can do p asterisk 7, and it will give me an output of 49. So you see certain things are going to yield output. And when it does, it will be listed in the Python editor in red text, red output 2 in this case. What if I want to raise p to an exponent? What if I want to raise p to an exponent? How do I do that? p uh, asterisk asterisk. OK, right. So in Python, it's a little bit different than what you may have seen in the past. You may be familiar with using the caret symbol to indicate exponents. But notice that if I do that in the Python editor, I get something completely different. OK? That's a different operator. There's something else going on there. But if I want an exponent like I'm used to, I would use double asterisks. I'm, I think it's a mod, actually. It might be a mod feature. I'm not sure. Like 7 mod 3. But no, that, that, even that doesn't make sense. No, it's not mod. I'm not sure. Now that I see that, I, I was expecting an error, but I get something out of that. But anyway, p double asterisk 3. That is how we do exponents. OK? So in this case, it'd be 343. 7 to the third power in this case. OK? So we can use we can use a couple of symbols to do things with variables we also can add subtract multiply divide we can you know a variety of other functions that are available to us in here now what if i instead would like to check if this variable is equal to something else so in this case like if i say well hey what if is this equal, for example, to 8? In this case, it says false. So what this is, this is what's called a Boolean operator. Right down. P double equals 7. OK? So what this means is that we're asking the question, is P equal to 7? So, and also notice what I'm doing here in this lesson, right? I'm using, uh, I'm using commands in the Python editor, but
but I'm also adding comments to those commands using the, using the pound sign. So, it, so the interpreter is going to ignore everything after the pound sign when it's evaluating your, the, the conditional statement in this case. So what is a Boolean operator? It's basically, you're basically asking a question. And this question here is, is p equal to 7? The interpreter is going to respond in one of two ways, which is where the Boolean part comes from. A Boolean expression or Boolean value is either true or false. And there are different operators that we can use in this context. So what if, for example, I want to see, well, hey, is p greater than 3? So to do that, I would do p greater than 3. I would use that symbol. I, and I, don't, I don't necessarily need the space, but I included the space just to show you, you know, make it a little clearer. Right? What other Boolean operators exist? What other Boolean operators can I do? OK. There's double equals, which we already demonstrated. There's greater than. What else? What are the ones? You can think about them right now. What are the Boolean operators? What other ways can I compare numbers or compare values? Less than. Less than. Less than, equal. Less than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. OK. What about not equal to? Okay, I have to I have to verify the syntax in Python. I have to verify verify the syntax in, in Python. I'll get that in a second. Okay, I believe it's p not equal four. Okay, I believe so. Yeah, that's it. What else can we do? Oh, oh, exclamation point! Right. Yes, we also could do this. Exclamation point equals. That does the same thing. Okay, so for not equal. We can do that or that, OK? And it's very important to be logging these kinds of comments and things when you're doing an assignment and you're, ex and you're, you're following the directions because you can answer the questions from the assignment into your log, which, by the way, we did not start in this video. So uh, bad. bad, yeah, bad, Mr. Copper. Log start dash ORT 113 video dot log, OK? All right, now we're logging everything from in, from in 14. OK. So now, continuing. In addition to straight up conditional statements, I can also make what are called compound conditional statements. And I can use and make those with other Boolean operator words. So for example, let's grab, let's grab a second variable here. We, had, we have p, which was 7. Let's have b, and that equals 4. We'll throw this in there as well, OK? So let's say, for example, I want to create a conditional statement that's going to compare two values and evaluate whether it's true or false. So here's what I can do. Let's say p is greater than or equal to 6, OK? And b equals 3. What do you think? Will this be true or false? OK, why will it be false? B does not equal 3. OK. Whoops. Did I, did I make an accident with the sign? Oh, wait. I, I know what I forgot to do. Double equals, right? Because I, I, I tried to assign 3. I can't do that. OK. Now it's false, right? So it comes out false as we predicted. So what if I did this instead? P greater than or equal to 6 or B equals Three. True or false? What will be output here? Is P greater than or equal to six? Yes. Yes, it is. Is B not equal to three? Sorry, is B equal to three? No. No, but since there's an operator here called or, right, now it doesn't matter which one is true. If one or the other is true, the output of the entire conditional will be true. Does that make sense? Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. What if I do this? Let's get, we can get really complex here. What if we do this? P greater than or equal to 6 and, sorry, or B double equals 3 and P less than or equal to 15. True or false? That's true. That is true. Yeah. What if I do that? That will now be false. 
Okay. So again, with and means that both parts of the conditional statement must be true to return true. Whereas with or means that either part of the conditional statement can be true in order to return true. Okay? So like that's like saying like if we had a call from the office, would all 10th graders that are girls please report to the office? All right? Would the boys get up? No. They would not. But what if the, what if it said would all students that are in pre-calculus or calculus report to the office? Would if, if you're in pre-calculus, do you go to the office? Yeah. If you're in calculus, do you go to the office? Yeah. If you're in stats, do you go to the office? No, no unless you're in pre-calc or stat, calc already, right? Okay, you get the idea? Okay. So when you, when you add two additional statements or make more than one statement and test for true or false, you just call it a compound conditional. Okay. Now, in Python, ladies and gentlemen, in Python, in our code editor, we can create and use these expressions to control program flow. So a very simple example is introduced in activity 133. So we're going to define a function. Okay, this is a kind of a base of this function, right? Okay, we're going to say define grade limit. Okay? And the arguments for grade limit are going to be grade. And when we write a function, in order to finish our definition, we need a colon. And notice that when we introduce that colon, it automatically indents our cursor four spaces on the next line. Because Python's method of grouping code is with indenting. Okay? Python's code of group, method of grouping is with indenting. Alvin, put the food away. Okay. Now, Python's method of grouping, grouping code is with indenting. So now every code I write, or every bit of code I write now that is indented four spaces is going to be part of this function, this grade limit function. Okay? Now, Here's what we are going to assign. I'm going to say this is a very straightforward function. I'm going to say the limit is 60. Okay? The limit is 60. Now, if the grade I'm submitting to this function, if grade is greater or equal to limit, I'm going to print, oops, what did I forget? What did I forget? I can't read that. Uh -oh. What happened here? What What is it not like? There, because it doesn't like the fact that I use a capital I. Python is very sensitive, by the way, in case you didn't see that already. Okay, print. You, your grade is a passing grade. But what if? That conditional evaluates as false. Print. This grade is failing and you should be ashamed. <laughs> no, that's not true. We wouldn't say that. This grade is failing. Work harder to make it a passing grade. That's better. That's more proactive and motivational, right? Yeah. And that's the end of our function. That's it. Okay? Now. What is this function's purpose? This function's going to take some argument and it's going to basically check it against an arbitrary limit that we've assigned within the function. And it's going to do one of two things. It's a very, very straightforward, basic if-then statement, right? So if I call up with grade limit, my grade, let's say I type in 67. What should the output be? Your grade is a passing grade. So see, it evaluated and checked against my limit, which I assigned as 60, and said, hey, that's six grades greater than, so we'll do that, right? But what if I put in 57? Now it's going to output the other statement, okay? 
So notice an if-else structure that's used in this function. An if statement is basically going to say, if this particular Boolean conditional statement is true, we're going to do this first part here. And notice that this first part is indented for spaces. And if I wanted additional things to happen, okay, like print an additional great job or something like that, I can indent that four spaces and this all will happen within that if statement. You understand that? Whereas if I put it elsewhere, or if I took this instead of putting it here, and then instead put it here, what will happen? Is this, is this program going to output great job? Okay, well, let's find out. Let's test it out. Let's do grade limit of 90, 85. Okay, what's going to be output? Okay, it should say your grade is a passing grade because it's greater than the limit, right? And then what about the great job? Is that going to print? It does. It does. But what if I say instead of 85, let's say the person tests, hey, is a five good? I got a five. Is that good? No. Right? Well, watch what happens. Now it's going to say, well, that doesn't make sense, right? Why? Because it's not nested in the else. Right. This has to be nested in the right location. If we only want great job to be printed when the person actually did a great job, then we have to put it within that same level of indentation. All right, so Python groups that code based on indentation. So if you only want specific things to happen as a result of a conditional evaluation, such as grade greater than limit, you've got to put all that code on the same level of indent. And if we had another, and then we'll talk about nested branching next section, but if we wanted another if statement to happen within here, then we'd have to nest that properly as well. We'd have to put that within, depending on how we want the program to flow. Okay, it can get a little complex when you start going with different levels of, of, of if then statements, but it is what it is. So in this particular lesson, this activity, you're going to be practicing making some functions that are going to use if then statements. Okay, it also is going to be asking you for different types of variables. Okay, and kind of an idea for that, but I'll let you go through the activity to kind of see that. Okay. All right. And that is that.